I'm here to talk to you about sphagnum moss, this fluffy stuff that you see here that people in the plant community all over the world use to put their cuttings and seedlings in so that they sprout roots faster and more reliably than they often would in other mediums such as water or straight up soil mix. I also place seeds on top of sphagnum moss so that they sprout and I use moss poles so that my climbing aeroids, aerial roots, attach and each leaf gets bigger and bigger as the plant grows taller and taller. I also have a few hoyas that grow permanently in sphagnum moss instead of a chunky soil mix. And it's common practice in the anthurium growing world to line the base of your anthurium with a crown of sphagnum moss so that as the stem grows taller and taller, the aerial roots of the plant have something to adhere to. So there's a few different types of sphagnum moss out on the market. You'll see Chilean sphagnum moss, orchid uh, sphagnum moss. You'll see New Zealand sphagnum moss, which sphag moss is. This is New Zealand sphagnum moss. The reason why there's different types is because they are of different quality. You want New Zealand sphagnum moss because it's fluffy and retains moisture and nutrients the best. It's not as pokey and it's not as sharp. FYI, spag moss products in particular are harvested from carefully managed, sustainable swamps. You want New Zealand sphagnum moss? That's the best kind! But what is sphagnum moss? I'll tell you. Sphagnum moss is moss that is found on top of bogs. It's a plant species. It's harvested and then dried out. This is a photo of a sphagnum moss bog. Because these bogs are a highly acidic environment, these plants are very unique. Sphagnum moss does not need to be sterilized before use, and it harbors many beneficial microorganisms and does not contain anything that will harm your plant. So don't worry about sterilizing it before you use it. Also, don't confuse sphagnum moss with the brown peat moss that you see mixed in potting mixes. That's a conversation for a whole different day, the difference between sphagnum moss and peat moss. Why do I like using sphagnum moss so much for my propagations? One, water retention. It absorbs water like a sponge. Two, nutrient retention. It's also able to absorb fertilizer and nutrients that I provide my plants with like a sponge. And three, it's very airy. It allows for a lot of air pockets and therefore the roots of my plants receive a lot of air and there's less likelihood for root rot. So the number one reason why this stuff gets a bad rap is that it turns green with algae over the long term, especially in high humidity, high light situations. So if you're growing under grow lights in a grow tent, you're going to see some green algae growth. It also decomposes over time, so you're going to want to replace it every few months or so regardless, especially if you're growing your plants in it over the long term. But let's be serious, I've had this shit in here for six months, I haven't changed it, and the plant is not complaining. Finally, don't forget that sphagnum moss does not contain its own nutrients, so you are going to have to use a fertilizer or nutrient solution in order to add them for your plants. So this is how I prepare my moss for propagation. First, I open the bag and dump a bunch in. Next, I will break apart the moss by hand, which gets everywhere. You will find it behind your ears at night, in between your boobs, maybe in your butt crack. If you're not finding sphagnum moss between your boobs at night, I mean, are you even trying? The next thing I will do to make the moss even easier to separate in the future, 
for my plant's roots, once they grow, is chop up my moss. I have seen it suggested that you could put the moss in like a dry blender kind of situation. I don't know if any of you have tried it. I have not, but that sounds very intriguing because this is tiring, but builds up hand strength and character. Chop, 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 chop. And also helps me to take out all of my anger and frustration and it's healthier than going to the ax throwing range. Just kidding. Okay. But sphagnum moss is kind of expensive and it's always back ordered. How do I increase the amount of volume of potting material that I have for all of my propagations? Add perlite. So perlite is essentially volcanic rock and it's inexpensive and great to add as well to your propagations. Roots love perlite. Do not inhale because there's a lot of dust. Not helpful at all, not even covering my nose. There we go. This is an excellent sensory bin. Very relaxing. <sighs> and the last and final part of my sphagnum moss perlite mixture preparation is adding water. Of course, I would normally do this under a sink, but just for purposes of this video, I'm doing it in a fancy pitcher. Normally, I would drench this entire bucket with water until it was sopping wet. Think of this stuff like a sponge, okay? You can wring it out to wring out excess moisture and then plant your propagations in it. Philodendron bilite. Fill the container up with moss. the cutting inside, add more moss on top. I'm going to drench this in the sink. If there's too much water on the bottom, I'll just simply pour the water out because I want it to be like a damp sponge. And voila, after a few weeks, you are going to see roots growing. So keep it damp, keep it moist at all times. Don't let it dry out and your plants will grow roots in no time. I hope you enjoyed this video. Follow all of Plant Babies for more.